Let's look at the narrative writing task. First, you're probably wondering, what is a narrative writing task? In the narrative writing task, you're simply being asked to write a story. For our first one in class, you are being asked to finish the first half of the story with your own chapter. Think of it like a chapter two. You're being asked to finish a story based on the information we have already learned. Use it to your advantage to write an awesome narrative. Simply put, your objective in this essay is to finish the story. You can think of it as the chapter two of the story using the first chapter to guide you. You're probably wondering, how can I write an excellent narrative continuation? I'd say that's a great question. When we write a continuation, we're going to begin from the moment the story left off. This means you don't have to retell information from the story. Instead, you can reference it or build off of it to expand upon it in your amazing narrative. Think of it this way. If you're playing Super Mario and you're on level 5, when you win, you expect to go to level 6. In your story, we read the first chapter, I'm expecting to read chapter 2. You're continuing from where we left off. The first step in writing your narrative continuation is to identify the following information so we can expand upon it in our own writing and our second chapter. Remember, because these parts of the story are already there, we don't want to change any of it. It would ultimately confuse the reader if you had a new setting or a new character that wasn't introduced in the first part. Remember, we're going to use what we know to guide our second part of the writing. The components that we looked at in class and will continue to analyze are the character or characters, the setting, the conflict, and the point of view, which is typically first or third person. When you pay attention to these qualities in the story, keeping them steady from one to the other and consistent allows the story to finish. If you switch any of these, the reader will become confused and they probably won't want to continue to read when they don't understand the writing. Remember. All characters are different, so it's important to think about how they would handle the problem. Think of them as an individual. All people react differently to new things. Consider how is this character different and how are they going to react to the different problems that come up in the story. Some important things to consider to make your narrative more interesting. Create a first solution that doesn't work. When your first solution doesn't work, it typically makes the conflict even better. Make your second solution work, because that way your story doesn't go on for too long. You can develop the conflict even more. Consider, how could this get worse, or how can it cause a new problem? You can also use the setting to make the story more interesting. Consider, if it's a hot or sunny day, snowy, rainy, how might this impact the characters? The third step is to make sure there is a theme. Remember, the theme is the message of your story. Another term you may hear me say to describe what the character learns as a theme is the lesson learned. In every narrative, it is essential for the main character to learn a lesson. If the main character does not learn a lesson, then nothing important has happened in the story. The last paragraph of your narrative will always focus on what the character learned from their experiences in the story. That's why it's important to make sure that the story matters to the character. From the beginning to the end, the character should learn something that changes them. In the last paragraph, the character should reflect on what they learned from the beginning of the story to the end. If the character doesn't learn anything, it's possible that nothing important happened, and we want to make sure that you have an awesome story. Here's a few story enhancers to make your narrative even better. You can spice things up with interesting literary devices. To make sure that your story stands out, you'll want to use many literary devices. A literary device is anything that makes your story more interesting. For example, you could use dialogue. When people speak in everyday life, that should be something that happens in your story. People have different ways of speaking. So you can use different tones of voice, different words, different vocabularies from character to character to emphasize that they're all individuals. Remember to use quotes around the words a character says. Word choice. Word choice is simply choosing a word and knowing when to use it. That's replacing the boring everyday words with something awesome. If you are using a specific word a lot, try to think of a synonym or a different way to express what is going on. You could use a thesaurus or a website like WordHippo if you need help finding new descriptive words. Try to be exact with your words as well. 
If something is good, you can call it amazing, terrific, or spectacular. And if something is scary, you can make someone's voice quiver or make them start to sweat. You can use imagery as well. Describe what is in your head as vividly as possible. This means to describe everything as clearly as you can. Use the five senses, see, touch, taste, hear, and smell. When you use all five senses, you'll make the reader feel like they're really there. It's also important to make the story fun and meaningful. Narratives ultimately should be fun. That's the reason why we want to read them. Pre-rate and make sure you have your ideas planned out so you approach the text with confidence. Sorry to tell you, but if it's boring to write, I'm probably going to have a hard time reading it. Try to make it exciting. Have fun being creative. This is a spot for you to do amazing things and think outside the box.